Welcome to Top 30. I'm Kristen Smith. And I'm Richard Bacon, and we'll bring you 30 stories in just 30 minutes. Today, we'll talk about a new survey that says many Americans are on track to retire with nothing. Yeah, we'll also have the incredible story of a man who was trapped in an avalanche and was saved by some very unlikely heroes. But first, many smartphone apps collect data about their users' location, and that data is for sale. The Wall Street Journal reports that location data from cell phones has become increasingly valuable as more companies deliver ads to users based on where they are. Someone passing a fast food restaurant may suddenly see an ad for that chain on their phone in whatever app they are using. Data is collected by cell carriers and companies like Ground Truth, who also own the popular weather bug. The firm reportedly tracks 70 million Americans every single month. Many of those companies are regulated by US law, but security experts worry about the possibility that some of them could be hacked. Not to mention the freak out factor. When that happens, it freaks me out so much. When I you walk like by it. somewhere, I you do? like it. It's sort of convenient. It's like, oh, you know what I might be interested in. Do you say well, thank you? Know you? I mean? You're like, thank you, <laughs> whoever you are <laughs> that doing that. Be freaky. All right, uh, West Virginia teachers have ended their historic nine day walkout after reaching a deal with state lawmakers for a 5% pay raise and better benefits. Governor Jim Justice said, at the end of the day, I think right one out. Teachers are expected to return to work this week. And two-year-old Parker Curry made headlines when a photo of her, captivated by former First Lady Michelle Obama's portrait, went viral. Obama wanted to meet the little girl, and the two had a dance party together. She said, keep on dreaming big for yourself, and maybe one day I'll proudly look up at a portrait of you. Now watch as Walmart employee Sabrina Barnes wows customers by belting out the national anthem. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I have goosebumps. You just never know what talent people are hiding behind their day jobs. I'm hiding none. <laughs> uh, but she was remarkable. Let's go to the New York Stock Exchange for our Fox Business Minute with your friend and mine, Nicole Pedalides. Nicole, I hear that BlackBerry just filed a lawsuit against Facebook. That's right, Richard. BlackBerry is suing Facebook for infringing the patent on its messaging technology, which covers features such as message encryption, battery, and message notifications. Nearly half of American adults admit to regularly shopping while drunk in 2017, spending an average of roughly 450 bucks per person, nearly double the prior year. They're spending on clothes, food, shoes, and gambling. Retailers such as H&M and Forever 21 are known for their cheap, more disposable clothing, but shifting trends by millennials could make fast fashion a thing of the past. Nicole, tell me, what is behind the change? There's been a surge of interest in brands like North Face and Patagonia, which are pricier but more durable. Some experts say that consumers tend to dress in more practical clothing during times of economic uncertainty and social unrest. Fascinating, Nicole, on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Thank you. OK, well, here's a crazy story. The deadliest animal in America isn't what you think. Scientists at Stanford looked at data collected by the CDC. They found that in the last eight years, over 1,600 people died in animal attacks. 49 people were killed by spiders. 48 died from snake or lizard bites. There were 13 fatalities from sharks. But far more of the fatalities came from animals we don't usually consider deadly. Farm animals, especially horses and cattle, were responsible for 576 deaths, about 36% more than any other category. Dogs killed 272 people. Children under four died at a much higher rate than any other age group. The study's authors called on parents to prevent dangerous interactions. Venomous insects like wasps, hornets, and bees killed 478 people. Really shocking stuff. The team hopes their findings will help reduce fatalities from animal attacks. Yeah, it's counterintuitive and fascinating. The animals we love the most kill more people. So you, you instinctively fear spiders, relatively few horses and dogs kill by far the most uh, people. Top 30 will be right back. Welcome back to Top 30. Should the surveillance video from outside the Parkland School shooting be released to the public? A judge will eventually decide the keyword is outside of the school. So this is a debate that's been going on. Media organizations, including the New York Times, CNN, the Miami Herald, and others, have said that it's in the public interest to release what happens outside the school to see how the police responded so that they can better understand 
what, if any, mistakes were made. Mm -hmm. Broward Sheriff's Office say in a court finding there is no way they want this released because it is an active criminal investigation. That's the argument. On one hand, if there were mistakes made, let's say that the police are hiding something, there were some mistakes. Well, the sheriff said there was a mistake made, didn't he? He admitted that one of his de deputies didn't run into the school. Right. And there's, there's rumours that others may not have responded properly as well. So mistakes very... have been admitted too. And it's very the... valuable to see all the mistakes. I think seeing the, yeah. the value in seeing the footage may be that other people could learn from those mistakes and do something differently next time. Yeah, I'm always a bit sceptical of media organisations saying things are in the public interest. It's not that mm. they aren't, it's just that it's also in the interest of newspapers to get critical footage released that everyone's going to want to see and talk about. The yeah. argument is, can it wait? Can it wait? Yeah. And it probably can. All right, well, we've all been on airplanes that have had a not-so-smooth landing. Well, now one passenger is suing, saying that a rough touchdown caused him mental anguish. The flight he was on, it was in 2014, and it actually landed at the wrong airport by mistake the airport had a much shorter runway, so that led the pilots to break very hard, causing the passengers uh, to go forward. Bags were flying out of those overhead compartments. It was crazy. So the man is suing, saying now, because of that, he has a big fear of anxiety, uh, fear and anxiety, I should say, of flying, and he had to get another job that didn't require travel that paid less. So he's suing for the income that he says he's lost as mm -hmm. a result of taking a job that means he doesn't have to fly. It's a very yeah. litigious country or country, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, You're the... fans of suing over here. <laughs> I yeah. know. We are fans of suing, yeah. I must admit. Southwest apologized, yeah. refunded all the tickets, and yeah. gave credits for future flights. Uh, and this guy is just waiting for his payout now, so we'll see if he gets it. Let me tell you, in most countries in the world, this gets nowhere. Yeah. But it's America. <laughs> yes, it is. So it just might. An interesting new study shows Holding hands with your partner causes breathing and heart rates to sync up and may even ease uh, bodily pain. It's the power of human touch. You like the power I of human touch? I believe this. The science is, is genuinely interesting in this piece, in which it says that syncing of the brain waves does lead to a decrease in actual pain that really happens. You know what? This actually happened to me when I was ha having my daughter. Um, I, I remember being there, we had to have an emergency C-section and I was freaked out because I'm scared of knives and all that. And then my husband took my hand and held my hand and I just felt an overwhelming sense of peace. I was like, everything's gonna be okay now. And it really worked. It really, really worked. It's also, it's also it's, what's interesting about that is partly, partly pain is, is psychological in the, in the sense that the comfort that he brought to you made you believe you were in a better place. Yeah. So you were less stressed, which probably meant overall yeah. you therefore felt that's actual pain. Yeah, the mind yeah. is so much stronger than the body. One day when I start holding my wife's hand and become empathetic, she will be able to enjoy these benefits. I'm hoping it's today. <laughs> uh, <laughs> top 30, I'll be right back. Welcome back to Top 30, an adult film actress who has claimed to have had an affair with President Donald Trump is now suing him. Stormy Daniels says an agreement that she signed that keeps her from discussing the relationship is invalid because it was never signed by Trump. The president's personal lawyer has also admitted to paying Daniels, although that lawyer, Michael Cohen, has not said what the money was for. It's a gripping, isn't it a gripping story? It is, and the lawsuit, uh, it, it says a number of things, uh, but uh, among them, it says that attempts were allegedly made to intimidate Stormy Daniels and basically yeah. shut her up. She said that he didn't sign the president didn't sign the contract, so it's not that's, valid. So it's not valid, right. So she's suing. If it ends up in court, and if she were successful, then it would free her up to talk in detail about this whole thing. And does yeah. she have photos? Does she have texts? You know, that's when it could really blow into a thing. I remember when Barack Obama once mm. got off Marine One holding a cup of coffee and didn't salute properly. Yes. And, you know, a lot of commenters no. were like, he hates America. Right. That was a big one. I that remember one. reporting on that in the news. Absolutely. <laughs> the same people who went crazy about that. Nothing to say about this. Nothing. Anyway, gripping. Let's see what happens. OK. Well, there's a new survey to talk about. It says many Americans are on track to retire with nothing. 
The website Go Banking Rates found that 42% of Americans have less than $10,000 saved for retirement. Some of them have no savings. Adults over 65 spend about 46 grand a year on average. And in terms of uh, why people have less than $10,000 saved or none at all, uh, the number one reason was because people say they don't make enough money. The second reason, uh, bills. bills, struggling to pay bills, and Which they're is adding a sim up. Yeah, similar point, isn't it? You know, right. Because you don't make enough money, you can't pay your bills either. Right. Um, some other reasons that their, people's jobs don't offer a plan, um, they use their savings for an emergency. Those are a couple of reasons yeah. as well. When you look at the breakdown and see that millennials are some of those who yeah. save less at a small right. time. When I was younger, I, I just didn't think about the future very much. You know what I mean? I lived, yeah. I lived for today. Uh, so it doesn't shock me. We were all younger once. <laughs> we were. Yeah, there is some good, yes. You're right, you, you, when you factor in the millennials, mm -hmm. that does make up a large part of the people who've not saved more than $10,000 and they're too young to save anyway. When I was younger, I didn't really save any money or plan for the future or think about tomorrow. And by younger, I mean at the start of today's program. <laughs> <laughs> well, top 30, we'll be right back. In today's hometown stories from Fox 29 Philadelphia, Girls Rock Philly is an organization that uses music to build confidence and leadership skills in girls and women. Founded in 2006, their first camp had only 20 girls in it, but now they have over 80 volunteers and 140 participants. The group also has programming for women and trans adults with a larger goal of fostering an intergenerational community that practices fearless expression, artistic experimentation, and collaboration. In our second story from Fox 2 Detroit, former Army Sergeant Tyrone Segrest was deployed to Iraq four times and also did a peacekeeping mission in Bosnia. And now after serving his country for more than 16 years, he's getting a big thank you, a new home. The Military Warriors Support Foundation fully renovated and furnished the house and identified Tyrone as a deserving recipient. In our final story from Fox 13 Tampa Bay, Adam Goldberg is a photographer with a very specific clientele, pets. And he's not afraid to make a fool of himself to get a dog's attention and capture the perfect shot. Adam's love for animals runs deep. He first developed an interest in pet photography after working in an animal shelter for two years. Better yet, Adam uses his talents to raise money for pet-related charities. So far, he's held over 100 events to benefit 30 charities across the country. And he's raised over $60,000 in the process. Welcome back. Now for this week's Page Six Fix with Elizabeth Wagmeister and Bevy Smith. I hear you guys have some inside info from the Oscars this past weekend. Well, Kristen, Bevy Smith and I were both in LA for the Oscars. Bevy, tell me about the party scene. I got off the plane directly from page six, went into Alfre Woodard's sister soiree for the Oscars where I ran into Jada Pinkett Smith, Tiffany Haddish, just a plethora of stars. And then of course, you know, my Tiffany Haddish asked me her advice on what she should wear to the Oscars and I gave it to her. Mm -hmm. Well, while Bevy was on the party scene, I was on the red carpet with stars like Ashley Judd who talked to me about her gorgeous custom made Time's Up ring. It featured black diamonds that are meant to represent the movement and there's even a gentle nod to Lady Bird in part of the setting. Now, Bevy, before we go, I have to know, who was your pick for best dress? My absolute favorite, Nicole Kidman and Cobalt Blue Armani Privé. And that big bow. That big bow. That's it for this week. See you next time. Great stuff. Thank you, guys. And for more news and gossip, watch Page Six TV weekdays. Check your local listings. A new study might help parents who can't get their kids to sleep. Researchers at the University of Colorado Boulder found that children three to five years old who were exposed to an hour of bright light before bed had dramatically lower levels of melatonin, a hormone that promotes sleep. The light reduced the amount of melatonin in the children by up to 90%. The levels stayed low for more than an hour past bedtime. In an earlier experiment, one hour of a far more powerful light reduced melatonin levels in adults by just 39%, less than half of what kids experienced. The scientists say that younger eyes have a clearer lens and a larger pupil that lets in more light. That lens accumulates protein over the years and dims the light with age. It's believed to be the first study on the effects of light on young children's sleeping habits, 90%. That's a big number. Yeah, I had no is. idea. My son sleeps with the lights on, but he always, yeah. but he always puts the covers over his head. So okay. I guess it is counteract dark. it. Right. Good. <laughs> Fight it. Makes sense. All right. 
Well, you probably assume the dirtiest object you come into contact with is a toilet seat, right? But these items are worse by a lot. Microbiologists at the University of Arizona discovered that your cell phone has about 10 times the amount of bacteria as the average toilet seat. Average carpet has about 4,000 times more bacteria than a toilet. The reason has to do with your shoes. It only takes a week for them to collect about 421,000 units of bacteria. But scientists say the items most likely to make us sick are the ones we share. That includes elevator buttons in your building or maybe a remote control in your living room. For kids, public playgrounds are dirtier than the average porta potty. About 80% of infections, though, come from items we touch. One more reason, Richard, to stock up on that hand sanitizer, because this story is. Ooh. It's a little gross. No, it's just full of interesting stuff. Well, it's interesting public and play gross. Public playgrounds do often look really dirty. Also, yeah. if you think about toilet seats, you do te naturally you wipe them and clean them quite a lot yeah. because you believe them to be dirty, which is something you don't do to your mobile phone very often. Well, we should. Yeah. You know, we need which to get those we, little wipes. Which we have now learned. Yes. Uh, scientists in Canada have found that younger siblings teach older siblings a very important lesson in empathy. Interesting. The new study looked at a group of 452 Canadian siblings between the ages of 18 months and four. After following them for a year and a half, they found small but significant increases in empathy. The study's co-author said, we found that both younger and older siblings positively contributed to each other's empathy over time. There was one exception to the finding, and that it was that older sisters showed no increased empathy with younger brothers. And they're not sure why that demographic didn't apply. I mean, I guess it, it does, Makes sense if you're a slightly older sibling and suddenly there's a smaller person than you in the world. Yeah. And you see their vulnerabilities, right? right. You instinctively, even if you're only four, you can see the vulnerabilities of a two year old. Yeah, and like my yeah. son always says, I'm supposed to protect Missy. That's what right. we call <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, his right. younger sister. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I think it's so endearing. I think makes it's really sense. endearing. It makes perfect sense. Either that or toddlers in Canada are exceptionally perfect. <laughs> right. Uh, top 30 will be right back. This is the worst flu season since 1918, and studies say dry air can spur flu outbreaks, which is why we've got today's top 30 solution, a water bottle humidifier at a special 81% discount. This cordless water bottle humidifier is perfect for your bedroom, office, or even hotel room. You can use any water bottle to add moisture to the room and breathe a little easier. The water bottle humidifier is super quiet and has an adjustable timer. It also comes with a USB charger, so you can just plug it into your phone or computer whenever you need to recharge. The water bottle humidifier retails for $69.99, but today you can buy it for just $12.99. That's an 81% discount. You can get this right now at luluway.com while they last. There's been a lot of talk that a beloved TV show might be coming back for another season. And Jason Matheson, host of The Jason Show on Fox 9 in Minneapolis, lets us know if these rumors are fact or fiction. Jason? Hey, Kristen. Well, a lot of you loved Showtime's Dexter. It was one of the biggest hits in cable for many, many seasons. It ran seven about the serial killer with a heart. Well, there have been a lot of rumors circulating around the internet saying Dexter is coming back to Showtime for an eighth season. Well, Dexter fans, and I'm one of them, I have bad news. The show is not coming back. All the rumors are unfounded. Michael C. Hall's doing something else. The creators are doing something else. But Dexter fans, we can always hold out hope for 2021. Kristen? So you're saying there's a chance. Thanks, Jason. When an avalanche recently came tumbling down at Squaw Valley Ski Resort in Northern California, a group of people came together to save the life of a stranger. Authorities say five people were caught in the avalanche, leaving one hospitalized. But in the midst of the chaos, someone could be heard yelling, my husband, my husband. That's when these people dove in with bare hands to dig the snowboarder out of the mountain of snow and save his life. Heather Turning was among those that helped and said of the avalanche, it looked like a blazing cloud of snow coming down. It went pretty fast. Not surprisingly, he was quite happy to be saved. This video of a local news anchor dancing along with the step team has taken the internet by storm, and it's easy to see why. Joining us now is Paige Failing from Fox 46 in Charlotte, Paige, I hear your co-anchor went viral. 
Yep, he sure did. So this is the Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity from Johnson C. Smith University. Their step team is amazing, and they came on our show and showed us what they got. But then this guy, my co-anchor on Good Day Charlotte, Jason Harper, tries to jump in and I mean, you can see, tries to jump in is the appropriate phrase to use here. Right, get ready. Although actually, to be fair, I can actually think of a much more appropriate phrase, Kristen. It's one we use a lot in the South for situations like this, and that of course is, bless his heart. <laughs> bless his heart indeed. Thanks, Paige. That is it for today's Top 30. On the next show, a surprising number of millennials pay their bills by getting money from their parents, and the world's oldest message in a bottle is found after 132 years. It is all coming up on the next Top 30.